Let me ask you guys a question. Out of all the talks that you heard so far, what do you think is the most important resource to all of humanity? I've heard a lot of water, right? That's up there. Agriculture, also up there. My bid is the sun. The sun brings us energy every day, and actually without any of this energy, we wouldn't have any of these processes that we talked about. In fact, the sun is so important that every single culture on planet Earth has at one point in time prayed to the sun through sun deities. Now, we have a complicated relationship with the sun. These deities, they take different forms. Gods of creation, gods of war, love, and utilitarian for ag agriculture. But the sun is so important that some of the largest structures that we've ever built are in fact sun temples, geared at praying to ensure the long survival of the cultures that built them. And our love-hate relationship extends to the sun in modern times. Thomas Edison, you know, the guy who popularized and capitalized upon artificial light so we didn't have to go outside as much anymore. We could work at night. <laughs> in the last year of his life, he would actually make a prediction that the sun's energy was the most important energy source of his lifetime. And he wished he had more time to capitalize on it. That's actually a real quote. And it's taken us 90 years, but most economists, most energy scientists agree that 80% of our energy needed over the next century needs to come from either solar power or wind power. And wind power, if you remember from fifth grade science, is just sun power with more steps. So the sun is incredibly important to us into the future. Now, we've done great strides with this. In 2023, this year alone, we crossed the one terawatt threshold of deployed solar. But if we want to hit the IEA's net zero scenario, we need 20 terawatts by 2050. Now, it's really hard to put these numbers into perspective. So that's the equivalent of the largest solar farm in the world today being installed every single day for the next 30 years. That's a lot of solar. And if you're a realist like me, we have EVs to plug in, we have a hydrogen economy to create, we have all the things we talked about today that still require energy. And if you take those into account, that's about 100 terawatts. That's that same energy farm being deployed every four hours for the next 30 years. And what we do today is this. Actually, 90% of solar energy is either laid out in farms, or if you're on an island nation, probably uh, laid out in an ocean in a protected bay. And ultimately, this is really cheap. In fact, the technology was designed exactly to do this. But it's not sustainable, unfortunately. It requires a lot of materials, glass, aluminum, steel, concrete. All those things emit CO2. But the biggest thing is that it's actually not land efficient. That high energy scenario that I talked about, we need 5% of the lower 48 states covered in solar panels to meet that. That's all of Ohio. And the reality is that when Thomas Edison first deployed the grid in upstate New York, what he did was he built generators in the city center and used high paying customers to build outwards toward rural areas. Because renewables are so land inefficient, we have to do the exact opposite. We have to build them where nobody lives and pipe it into where we all live, in here in Boston, New York, elsewhere. And that creates a huge logistical challenge for these sort of deployments. We've known this actually for a while. The United States has devoted $30 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure bill to solve this. But MIT, Princeton, and others have estimated that it's upwards of $2 trillion of total investment needed by 2050 in order to put the renewables on the grid that we need. This is more money than the solar that we need to put on the grid. And I'm going to show this picture again because we do all of this because this is in our mind of what a solar deployment is. Like, it's actually been this way for about 80 years, and that's why we don't have an intuition on what we can change about it. Now, I've had the pleasure over the last decade on working on something new. I've been working on this. What is this? It's right here. I'm holding it in my hand. It's lightweight. It's flexible. This is a solar panel. And it's so radically different from what you've imagined before, it can entirely change the way that we think about deploying and generating electricity. Now, I lied to you a little bit, because we actually know how to solve that true trillion dollar issue. All we have to do is this. We have to deploy exactly where we want the electricity to be. But this also has its logistical challenges. Solar panels are really heavy, and only about 15% of buildings today are solar ready. Only about 15% can be upgraded economically 
in order to handle those sort of deployments. And we see this in the numbers. Less than 2% of buildings actually have solar on them. But this technology is so light, it solves all of that. We can actually unlock the full asset class of every building. We can deploy this anywhere. But what's more is we can also think about how to change the way we deploy. We can deploy on facades. Our skyscrapers can be energy generating solutions of the future. Bus stops can generate power for the EVs that we want to plug into them. And you might be thinking, Rich, you know, this is just really expensive. Why do we want to do this? They actually scale really easily. They're printed like newspapers, shown in this video here quite quickly. That film, by the way, is one one hundredth of a human hair thick. And if we converted over the New York Times Center, again, they're printed, it would be the largest manufacturing center of solar in the Western world, over 100 gigawatts per year annually. What's more, we deploy in all these buildings like that Amazon warehouse I said earlier, we actually solve that 80% problem. We hit it. We save five gigatons of offset CO2 that otherwise would have been burned. And we completely reduce, if not fully eliminate, that $2 trillion problem. What gets me so excited about this technology and the reason why I continue to work on it previously and through my career is not just the problems it solved, but where we can go next. See, everything I talked about was a logistics problem on weight and deployment, but it's flexible. We can actually roll this up. And if you roll it up into a giant roll and you put it into a U-Haul, you can ship a megawatt. What is a megawatt? <laughs> a megawatt is rural parts of eastern India, where these photos are taken from, of rural Africa, where the grid has never stretched. And I'm not talking about just light bulbs or electric stoves. I'm talking about full American demand. A megawatt is the expansion of our race into the stars. It is a space station. It is bases on the moon and Mars. And a megawatt, most importantly here at home, is an entire community in Puerto Rico devastated by a recent hurricane. We can ship that all in one truck. What's more, we can deploy these things on airplanes, electricity and transportation of the future. If we deploy these on cars, we save materials and batteries. That's a huge issue. We can create entirely new spaces that are both healthy for us, protect us from the sun, generate electricity. Agriculture can be dual land use. Farmers can provide us all our nutrition, but also provide us all our electricity. And we can also do a lot of good towards renewable and sustainable electrified transport. That's increasing as well. But what gets me so excited is the things that we have not thought of yet, the things that I've not thought of yet, and the things that the next generation and the next generation to come can think about how to deploy this technology and how to continue our society sustainably into the future. I started this talk showcasing one thing, that in antiquity, we used to build some of the largest structures in order to pray to the sun, in order to preserve our continued survival and the continued benefit of those cultures. Join me in imagining a future where absolutely everything is our next solar temple. Thank you. <laughs>